Tonight we have Jason Taylor doing a variation of a semper fly. He'll be using a Arctic Fox dubbing brush and also showing us different ways to finish off the head of the fly to give it different profiles. So I'm going to do another one and I think uh, these are pretty cool things that have <clears throat> Every, as of like in the last couple of years, been I think pretty hot. A lot of guys making their own dubbing brushes for a long time, and now there's so many commercially available. This one is uh, SF, or you know, for our blend on a wire, and I think there's a lot of uses for it. Um, you could almost build a wrap on the hook and trim it and to a shape, and and just have a fly immediately. Um, I like to use it for, again, density in front of the flies, and I like to use it for support of other collars. Um, this one is the uh, Farrar blend. There's EP ones, there's craft fur ones. Um, it's just a matter of what you get your hands on and what you play with. I think they all serve the same purpose. I started this not knowing how much time we have, but... This is, I think, probably the swimmiest back section of a fly on the planet, the Simper Fly, from Bob's original book. Um, I didn't think I'd need to show it, and I'm happy to show it. Um, but a sprig of bucktail, and then these are all strung saddles that are just equally tied around. Is everyone familiar with that, or is anyone not familiar with that? Everybody's done that? Yeah, so um, this is something I like to do with that that tail. Um, and again, I just I started this one earlier just for time's sake. It's a neat little fly that's come pretty quickly. This is one of those brushes. This one's made of a blend of. Uh, Fox and synthetic and I like it. I like this one because the Because the materials tapered from the center it's denser and then finer you can see the little fine tips almost I think it's Arctic Fox um, Mixed in with the synthetic and I think I Think this whole bag was I want to say seven dollars I think there's six six of these brushes in there you see you get quite a quite a bit of material and again, not using it for the whole whole fly. Um, <clears throat> I think this stuff is pretty awesome. I like to put it in between collars. It's just good old fashioned Palmer chenille, cactus chenille. Uh, it comes in about a million colors. <clears throat> this step is probably not necessary, but I like it. And that flash is going to shine through the next step we do. Uh, and just as I would palmer a feather on, I'm going to take it, palmer it. What's neat about this stuff is... Extra large size. I want to say it's medium. Medium. Yeah, that's, that's bags is medium. I know it's a large, a small... I think cactus chenille comes even like a longer length. Uh, and what I like to do is you can take it like that, but I actually will go and wrap back over it and I'll get a little more on. And that's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna provide a nice chunk of flash underneath. And it's also gonna kinda of help Tie it down so to help help support this brush. So it'll take a while to figure out how much you're going to use. A couple things you can do with it. Again, they're all basically the same idea, just different materials depending on what you're used to. I'll take a little pair of wire cutters and I cut it off. You expose that wire. You just want to get that tied down gently and well. 
as not to, so it doesn't cut your thread. And then I'll get some pressure on it. And then we're just going to polymer it on, just as if we were polymering the front of a Simplify with feathers. Just fold it back, just enough to get it out of your way. We'll come back and, and pick out anything that's trapped after, just like, as I would those feathers. And I'm going to show you, this is, I think, pretty cool. So, I'm going to stop right there, and, and we'll pretend that that's where the eye of the hook is for now. I'll cut the wire, and then I'll kind of cut the material. You can see that. Again, gently and firmly tie it down. And then I'm going to look for, you can use a comb or dubbing brush or a good old fashioned toothbrush. And now we've, that came back and kind of met the profile of the feathers. And I'm just going to stop right here for a second. So I like the way that red shines through. If I was to take that and continue to the hook eye, I think you'd have a pretty spot on mullet imitation, right? So then if you want to change that profile, same fly, what this brush will do is it'll kind of lend some support as those bulkheads did to those collars. It'll lend some support to, say, a collar or bucktail. Um, so I'll go in. Find a nice clean edge of bucktail. If you like marabou on your flies, this is now dense enough to support some palmered marabou over top of it. If that's your personal preference. You like marabou, come across the top of the fly. Uh, if you want more of a small herring shape, you make that bucktail fall, length fall into you know the taper of those feathers in the back. They'll distribute it evenly. And now you get more of a... kind of herring profile. Is that making sense, everybody? So, if I want it a little wider body shape, I could come in with a couple different snips. I'm going to measure that. Get some thread pressure. Kind of directly under that shank, really tighten down so it starts to flare. And then on top, <laughs> trick some old guy showed me. <laughs> you 
come in and get a couple different lengths of your bucktail here. Square it off again. And now that brush will support. More of a peanut butter per shape. It's more round. And these are very, I mean, very basic ideas. And then, if you want it, and do all that. Pick up something longer, maybe a little softer. Imagine if we something that really falls deep into the profile as far as length. I'm going to keep some of these butts. We're going to put. We've added, those butts will add more density to the head. Get it distributed well. build up dam here nice and stout now once that hair lays back if you put an eye towards the rear you kind of get more of a <laughs> squid profile does everybody see that so just a couple different profiles you can get out of the same idea fly with that brush kind of providing density up front and support for whatever you want to put on it let's kind of I guess where my head is right now I'll end it there Questions or thoughts about any of that? Can you show that technique of um, rolling the bucktail in your fingers again? Yeah. So the uh, it's not it's almost a, a slide. Mm -hmm. Just slide. Doesn't have to be a lot. You end up with, you know, just kind of tapered one way. And that's nice over the top or in the front of the fly. Gives you a couple different lengths of bucktail. It's uh, out of Bob's book. I'm going to cut it short again. So, I mean, those are some of my ideas as far as, like, application of some of the stuff I do in a, in a more. Thanks, Jason, for sharing another great fly with us. Happy to do, kind of open up to questions and show me some stuff now.